definitely I asked for 2023, what are some goals that you have for yourself? And 45% of people stated that one of their goals was to pay down debt. So in this video, I'm going to give a few tips on how to pay down debt. Let's get into it. I believe when we are debt free, it's really going to help us to where we have that financial freedom to be able to do the things that we want. Do we want to travel? And you know, and not have that stress on, you know, have the penny pinch or not being able to pay our bills on time. You know, we don't want to have that kind of struggle every month. So being able to not have debt is going to be the way to go. So we're going to go into the first tip on how to pay down debt. And first, that's going to be gathering the data. So one, we want to pull our credit report, pull our statements. We want to see where is our starting point? How much debt do we have? Also, we want to put creditor. We want to put how much do we owe? How much is our monthly payment? What is our due date? And what is our interest rate? Also, we want to be able to get even with our regular bills. Are we current on our regular bills? And we want to indicate that on the piece of paper or wherever we're writing this information down. But you can always go down in the description and get my free budget and debt repayment template. Or you can get my 2023 digital budget planner. So it can help us because it has a debt repayment template in there and it has a budget. So it's going to have all of the information. It also has a place in there where you can keep all your credit cards. So you have to take a look at that if you're interested on my Etsy shop. But it's going to be very important for us to write down all the information so that we're going to know where our starting point is. And next, we want to create a budget. <laughs> you know, it's always important for us to know how much money do we have coming in compared to going out, and then how much money do we have left over? Or possibly, do we not have any money left over? Because most of the time, I would say, you know, since we are not creating a budget, you know how you'll have that money, uh, you, you're going to say, okay, I'm going to do this with the money. And then since you don't have a budget, you're just doing all these things. And then by the time you go <laughs> to do whatever it is that you say you were going to do, either one, there's not as much money there or there's not any money there at all. So I really feel like budgeting, it really gives us that freedom to be able to do what we want to do with our money. I don't really see it as restrictive. So next, we want to create a goal and we want to use our SMART goals. So is this specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time? When we're paying down debt, it can really be hard sometimes. And so we want to make sure that we are creating a timely goal for ourselves. And is this attainable? Because let's say if you don't have a lot of money coming in, do you want to say, let's say if you have $10,000 in credit card debt, is it going to be attainable for you to say, oh, I'm going to do it in five months or I'm going to do it in 12 months? Most likely it's not because usually we want to create more realistic goals for ourselves so that we're not being overwhelmed because sometimes when we're overwhelmed, then we'll just, you know, stop. And then we are, you know, in the same place that we were, you know, last year. So we want to make sure that we're really creating a sustainable goal for ourselves because I know, you know, like not last year, but the year before when I had paid off $20,000 in one year, I will say there were some times where it was kind of overwhelming, but I knew deep down that I wanted to go ahead and complete this goal. So, you know, sometimes it can get overwhelming because sometimes when you're paying down debt, it's just like you can just be like, man, I want to do something else with the money. But I was just thinking like, if I pay this off, I'm going to have the freedom to be able to do so much many other things with the money. So that's why I kept going. But also when we are creating that goal, one of the other tips that we want to do is we want to set aside, let's say some money for a rainy day, either putting 500, a thousand or whatever you're comfortable with. Because let's say you get a flat tire, are you going to have to put that on a credit card and then you're going to be adding more credit card debt? So you want to have like a little small rainy day fund so that you're not, you know, accumulating new debt. Next, what we want to do is we want to create a plan for our debt repayment. So are we going to be doing a debt snowball or are we going to be doing a debt avalanche? So the debt snowball is going to be where you are 
putting the smallest to the largest and you're just gonna you know start with the smallest and then pay that down put it to the second one but you'll put the first minimum payment with the second one and then just pay it down or do you want to do the avalanche where you are actually paying down the highest interest rate and then kind of going from there but i will say that also taking a look to see when are you going to be having extra money coming in because that was one way that i was able to pay down my auto loan down fast as well because let's say when sometimes we get paid three times so we'll get an extra check within that month and let's say do you get any bonuses are you getting a tax refund and not to say that you have to use all of that money but by using some of that money is going to help to get to that goal a whole lot faster so we just want to know when we might have the extra money coming in so one way that i was able to pay down some credit card debt was by using the discover it doing a balance transfer now we do have to remember that doing balance transfer sometimes there's between a three and a five percent balance transfer fee but i would say you know depending on how much is your interest rate already because if you have a 16 a 17 or 26 percent interest rate and you know you have five or six credit cards compared to doing a balance transfer and having that one you know let's say if it's a three percent balance transfer fee i would rather have like a hundred dollars or so one time because over that 12 15 or 18 months of you paying it down and not have the interest rate really over time you're going to be saving on interest so i would say doing a balance transfer is going to be beneficial but you really have to decide is that going to be helpful for you but you know we are creating a plan but see when you do that balance transfer you most definitely want to make sure that this is a plan that you can maintain because if you come to the 12 15 or 18 months or maybe even 21 months and you haven't paid it down and then you're gonna have you know because most of the time it can be a higher interest rate you know then it's just like we're kind of starting back from square one so that's why we want to make sure that we're creating an attainable goal for ourselves when we're doing that. But let me know in the comments, are you going to be paying down debt this year? And do you have some tips or tricks that I didn't give in this video? If you do, drop down in the comments and let us know. But then also check out this video where I listed five credit cards to where you could do a balance transfer up to 21 months. It's not a game, it's a